this be a normal field trip? With a friend? No way! Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Next thing that you know, you see it. Octopus in the neighborhood. Surfing on the sound wave. Swinging through the stars. Yeah. Take a left that you'll be testing. Pick your second right back more from the Magic School Bus. Alligator Nostril. Climb on the Magic School Bus. Make a plane to the Drop your bones right to the sea. Come on in and don't be shy. Come on. Just to make your day complete. You might get baked into a pie on a magic scuba. Step inside, it's a wild ride. team knows about defense? You should see some of the plants of the rainforest when it comes to protecting themselves. <coughs> to keep from getting munched on, many rainforest plants have leaves that are poisonous to insects. One example is the bush that makes tea leaves. Insects hate it. Good thing my mom isn't an insect. She loves tea. <coughs> Defensive sap, cheek lay tree have it. It's very sticky and traps insects who try to eat it. But you probably eat it all the time. Cheek lay sap is the chewy part of gum. You think a soccer team knows about defense? You should see some of the plants of the rainforest when it comes to protecting themselves. To keep from getting munched on, many rainforest plants have leaves that are poisonous to insects. One example is the bush that makes tea leaves. Insects hate it. Good thing my mom isn't an insect. She loves tea. Defensive sap, cheek lay trees have it. It's very sticky and traps insects who try. You think a sock? this ant farm is actually very small. Real ant nests have millions of members. You might think that ants are picnic pests, but ants eat lots of other small insects and help keep other pests under control, whether it's at a picnic or in the rainforest. There are lots of different kinds of ants in the rainforest. Leaf cutter ants, army ants, bullet ants, acacia ants, and more. There are some funny fish in the rainforest, including ones that like to eat the fruit that falls in the water. I've heard of fruit flies and flying fish, but I've never heard of fruit fish. Does anyone else think there's something fishy going on here? Carlos?
help Adelaide the Spider Monkey rejoin her group. But look out for the Hungry Harpy Eagle or else. Use your mouse to guide Adelaide from branch to branch. Click where you want her to go, but be careful. The longer you hold the button down, the farther she'll jump. Another swing through the trees, or quick. It's mating season, and Fernando Frog has to sing to attract the females. Use the levers to change the pitch and volume of Fernando's song, and see how many dates he can get. Move the volume slider to make Fernando Frog louder or quieter. have a deep of a good thing. Do you want to, Sarah? Thanks for making Fernando's mating season a singing success.
Sometimes it's hard to tell what's good to eat and what's not. Help Jacqueline and Rufus tell Jackamar fly around and eat butterflies. But watch out. Brightly colored butterflies are poisonous. And if Jackie eats too many of them, she'll lose her appetite. Click where you want Jackie to go. If she sees a butterfly nearby, she'll eat it. Don't eat any bad butterflies. Today's lunch, butterflies to go. Poor butterflies. Dull butterflies, yuck. Bright butterflies, yuck. Remember, dull butterflies yuck, bright butterflies yuck. Watch out! Brightly colored butterflies are poisonous. And if Jackie eats too many of them, she'll lose her appetite.
it's not easy being a butterfly. Not easy being a butterfly. Oh no! You did great! Let's play again. Do you want to play? Thanks for playing! Rain, rain, it's a game. Play it twice, it's not the same. Well, if you can't make rain disappear, Help a beetle to steer clear. Go get him! Use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move Stevie Beetle left and right. The only keys you need to press are the left and right arrow keys. The only keys you need to press are the left and right arrow keys. Anyway. left and right with the arrow key. You don't need the mouse for this game. right with the arrow keys. You don't need the mouse for this game.
Uh-oh, I think the sun's coming out. See you next time it rains, which won't be long around here. If you're a blind mite the size of a pinhead, how do you get from the flower you live in to another one more than a mile away? Simple, you hitch a ride on a hummingbird's beak. How do you do that? There's the tricky part. A mite has to jump at just the right angle to make it into a hummingbird's nose. Use the up and down arrow keys to position your mite and then press the space bar to launch it. Whatever you want. After all, it's your lizard. Small feet, small body. The peewee approach comes up to the line, and there he goes. Going, going. This could be the answer, folks. Get so small that the water doesn't even notice you. Uh-oh. Spoke too soon there. 
The water just remembered that this little lizard is supposed to sink now. Hmm. Maybe if we made the feet larger and the body smaller... Click the reset button to build another basilisk, and that's no monkey business. Large feet, small body, an interesting combination. Up to the starting line, and he's off! Look at this, this one go, folks! I've never seen anything like it! He's running furiously, great form, but will he make it down the final treacherous yard? And yes, he's going all the way! A new winner! A new champion! Holy Toledo, folks! It looks like large feet and a small body make a river racing winner! Look at that lizard go! You just broke a record! Monkey Kazil here. Click on the reset button to build another speedy racer. All right, here we go. Large feet, large body on this lizard, and we're off. Look at those large feet go, pushing, pushing, and oh, not this time, folks. Down we go. It's a free bath for the lizard, courtesy of that too large body. Come back when I click the reset button to build another bathroom, and that's no monkey business. The rainforest is full of animal sounds. Join the cacophony of calls, the chorus of grunts and growls, by clicking on the keys below. Play the keys one at a time, like a piano, or click an animal's icon to place it in the forest where you can hear it all the time. Use the mouse to click on the piano keys and play the animal's call. Welcome to Ant Antics. This group of ants is trying to bring food back to their queen, but they're lost. Your mission is to lead the ants home while picking up all the food you can. Watch out for the ant bird, because she's on the lookout for you. Use the arrow keys to move the ants. a path through all these leaves. about the mouse. 
just use the arrow keys to move the ant. these leaves. The ants go wherever you guide them. Steer them over objects you want to pick up. Ants can get promoted. about the mouse, just use the arrow keys to move the ants. Do worker ants get vacations? I doubt it. figure out where to go.
worry about the mouse. Just use the arrow keys to move the ant. Guide your ants to it. Look at that score! You get a spot in our ant and pick Hall of Fame. You want to play? Come back the next time you want to bug out with ant antics. Can having ants in its pants really help a tree grow? How about fun in the sun? Let's find out how each of these affects a growing tree in ants and their trees. Let's see how big we can see that cloud up by the sun. Move it around and we'll see how quick the grow. You don't need to use the keyboard for this game. Just use your mouse to drag the clouds on or off the sun and click the grow button to watch how the tree grows. I wonder if you can give a tree too much sun. I wonder if you can give a tree too much sun. Without sun, a tree won't get too far. But at least the ants keep this little guy free from strangler vines. You know what I always say, if at first you don't succeed, tree, tree again. Do you want to plant another seed? Your habitat is where it's at. It's where you live. And it's got all the things you need to survive. Can you build a rainforest habitat? Give this forest some heat and rain and see what kind of habitat develops. Click the thermometer to change the temperature. Cold, no rain, tundra. Lots of rain, warm breezes, lush green trees. It looks like a tropical rainforest to me. Throw in a few thousand species of plants and animals and we're there. Kind of forest pines for Georgia because Georgia USA is where you want to be if you're a warm temperate pine forest.
Lots of heat and no rain? You get your just desserts here, cause that's what you made. Just a desert. Cool weather and a medium amount of rain all add up to the kind of pine forest you can find in the northeastern USA. Green, cool, and wet. It's not mint ice cream, it's a temperate rainforest. A forest needs lots of heat and rain to become a rainforest. How much? It has to be around 80 degrees Fahrenheit all year round, and over six and a half feet of rain must fall on the forest each year. I'm always ready to play habitat build, whether or not. <laughs> Life's pretty good if you're a helicopter damselfly just buzzing around, catching spiders and laying eggs. The only problem is the Rufus Mutt Mutt, who thinks you'd make a pretty good lunch. Think you're ready to evade and lay eggs? Here goes. Just use the arrow keys. Dana will go where you guide her. Mm -hmm. Use the space bar to drop eggs. Mm -hmm. Isn't this what life's all about? Eating, not getting eaten, and dropping eggs for bonus points. Don't let that bird flip ya, cause he's hungry. You'll be a damselfly in distress if you don't watch out for that mop mop bird. Bellies, yummy. Caught by the mop mot. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
Please don't get caught by the mop mod. Float like a damselfly, sting like a bee. I'm the greatest, I'm damselfly D. You'll be a damn little fly in distress if you don't watch out for that mop mop bird. You'll be a damsel fly in distress if you don't watch out for that mop mop bird. Isn't this what life's all about? Eating, not getting eaten, and dropping eggs for bonus points. Please don't get caught by the mop mutt. Please don't get caught by the mop mutt. Hey you, eat a spider. I guess you're all flied out. Come back soon. If you're on someone else's dinner menu and you can't run, your best bet is to hide. Put together the pieces to see some hidden species. Click the puzzle piece under the magnifying glass and drag it to its place on the board. Click the arrows to see other pieces of the puzzle. Do you want to try? What? 
Lively. But like other species, night creatures are best suited to life in specific parts of the forest. Help these animals out by putting them where they belong, from dusk till dawn. Do you want to play the easy game or the hard game? <laughs> That's it. I guess she doesn't like it there, and they don't like her. That's it. That's it. That's it. Whoa, I guess she doesn't like it there, and they don't like it. Exactly. That's it. Oops, I guess that one goes somewhere else. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oops, I guess that one goes somewhere else. Okay, okay. Yikes, try again. Oops, I guess that one goes... That's it. Exactly! Oops, I guess that one goes... Exactly! 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 Yikes, try again! Check it out! That animal is where it belongs! Oops, I guess that one goes in a... Night on! Oh, the right way of feeding the animal! Do you want to play a... Exactly! Yikes! Try again! Check it out! That animal... Exactly! Exactly! Yikes! That's it! Exactly! Check it out! That... That's it! Exactly! Check it out! That... 
Check it out. <coughs> that, that's it. <coughs> I guess that, that's it. Very good. Do you want to play again? Click easy game or hard game and go for it. Even at night. Goodbye and remember, you'll have a stratifyingly good time whenever you play night stratification. You've learned so much about rainforests, why not make one for yourself? Just take a leaf, dip it in the pigment, and start painting. Click the jaguar to scare the paint right off your canvas. Any old time you want to create is great by me. Bye! Birds in the rainforest are colorful, beautiful, and diverse. I wonder why their wings sometimes look so short. According to my research, those short, broad wings are great for flying in between all the trees in the dense forest. These insects are really bugging me. My beetles look like bees, and my katydid looks like a leaf, and my butterflies are bright blue because I ran out of orange paper. Everyone knows insects don't look like that. There are rainforests in the northwestern USA, which are wet and cool, but not cold. Unlike rainforests in the rest of the world, these rainforests don't have lots of different species. But they do have some neat animals that are all their own, like banana slugs, rubber boas, and elk. Asian rainforests range from the west coast of India to Indonesia, the Philippines, New Guinea, and some of the tropical islands of the Pacific. Here, animals like orangutans and macaques live among the tall trees that look like giant lollipop orchards. Trees are home to many insects and plants. Animals are great at adapting to the environment they live in. But I can't make my paper Katie did camouflage itself as well as the real thing. Rainforests help recycle carbon dioxide into the oxygen that everybody needs to breathe. And by reducing the amount of carbon dioxide in the air, they help prevent global warming. Rainforests need water and lots of it. It rains just about every day in a rainforest. Parts of the rainforest die and then rebuild themselves all the time. I don't get it. How can something die and then fix itself back up? Unlike temperate parts of the world, which have spring, summer, fall, and winter, the rainforest only has two seasons. Rainy and not so rainy. The rainforests are colorful, but you won't find the leaves changing color the way they do in other places. That's because the rainforest has no fall. Life, my threads are all tangled. There must be some way to show that all 
life in the rainforest is connected. According to my research, we still need to do a lot more research on the rainforest. Don't you hate it when you don't know everything? A rainforest in disarray? Hmm. If you want to help my students turn the classroom into a rainforest, you'll need to go on a field trip and find what's missing from these compartments. Then, use the biocloning tool to make copies for the kit. Everybody does it, and it's every animal's way of giving something back to the environment. It may be yucky to some, but for the rainforest, it's the sloth ate lunch and left a treasure behind. You may think it's not much, but some tree is happy for... You might not want to step in this fertile pile. Click the click, click the green clue button to hear hints about our missing bioclones. shows how our classroom can change with each bio clone we find. I can't wait till we find them all. Then our classroom will look great. But it doesn't look like anything's happened. We probably need to find more of the missing items from the toolbox. Vines can be found on many of the trees of the forest. My vines are mainly found on my desk. I can't make them stay up anywhere. There are thousands of different kinds of butterflies in the rainforest. That's one of the reasons why rainforests are so wonderful. Rainforests left on Earth are in Central and South America. The Amazonia rainforest of Brazil is home to spectacular creatures like the Pink River Dolphin and the Giant Armadillo. Amazonia is truly amazing. In Hawaii, rainforests grow on the sides of many of the state's volcanoes. Because Hawaii is alone in the middle of the Pacific, many unique creatures evolved there, like the crested honeycreeper, which drinks nectar from the Ohia Lehua tree. Legend says that Ohia and Lehua were tragic lovers who are together forever in the form of this tree. The rainforest is home to many different kinds of reptiles and amphibians, like my frog Bella here. Even though rainforests on the continent of Africa all differ from one another, African rainforests are typically shorter than rainforests in the rest of the world. They also aren't as dense. This makes it easier for elephants who happen to be passing through. There is an incredible variety of flowers in the rainforest. And where there are flowers, there are bees. 
Flowers are beautiful, especially if you're a bee that drinks their nectar for food. But it's not just one way. The bees give something back. When a bee drinks the flower's nectar, the flower's pollen sticks to the bee's legs. Caterpillars are really just baby butterflies. Scientists call this part of the butterfly's life the larval stage. can also occur where it's cool and wet, like the northwestern U.S. But they're different than the tropical forests we're studying. Parts of Africa, South America, and Asia are in the tropics. So are lots of islands in the Pacific. The tropics are always warm and they only have two seasons, the rainy season and the dry season. Everyone's been working very hard on projects about the rainforest. Give those projects some clicks and you'll learn all about them. Ready, class? Let's blast off to the Costa Rican rainforest. But our first stop is the Division of Driver's Licenses. Before you can drive the bus, you have to get your license. Click the controls on the right side until you get the face looking just <laughs> the way you want. Yep. Then give yourself a name <laughs> and an <laughs> when you're ready to roll. Bing! <laughs> you want to travel, just turn the steering wheel to choose a new place. The buttons to the right of the steering wheel will push down to show you where you're pointing the bus. When you push down on the place you want to go, click the steering wheel and we're off. If outside exploration is part of your plan, click the little doors on the right and out we go wherever we are. Click the rainforest toolbox to see what tropical trinkets you need to find. Click the sound button to turn the sound on or off. Click the knapsack to see a map of the rainforest we're visiting. If you want to know about the other things on the bus, click the question mark and I'll be right back. Exploring outside will fill up your rainforest travel log and maybe your rainforest toolbox. Click the yellow doors on the right if you want to go outside. <laughs> this rainforest at a glance map will show us around. Click each section to hear about its highlights. The canopy is at the top of the rainforest. High in the canopy, you'll find an area that's home to figs and frogs as well as some other species. Sometimes everything comes full circle. 
take this fruit. A monkey did. He ate it and pooped the seeds out. Guess what grew from that? More fruit trees. And how's that for a fruitful cycle? <laughs> forecast rain followed by more rain and then rain no rain tomorrow until it rains a lot how much rain is that try over six and a half feet of rain each year minimum for any rainforest try more than 18 feet of rain each year in some forests don't forget your umbrella Nice draw you got there, partner, but it's time to saddle up and head back to the rainforest. <laughs> this is where you'll keep... If a new look is what you're after, this is the place to change your face. Understory palms know that patience pays off. They survive for years on tiny amounts of sunlight until a nearby tree falls. Then they grow as much as they can before other trees shade them in again. The walking palm is especially good at finding light. It grows along the ground until it finds a sunlit spot. It's walking towards the light, so to speak. It sure looks luscious out there. Click the yellow doors on the right if you want to go outside to explore. If you want to help my class finish their classroom rainforest, you need to find the item missing from this tropical toolbox. This biocloning tool will help us... Click around and check out the... As I always say, there's no better way to take a look around than being outward bound. And while you're at it, keep your eyes peeled for bioclones for the rainforest toolbox. Life in the rainforest is so intricate. In a rainforest, the animals and plants all depend on each other. So when one species is endangered, many others are also affected. Think of all the foods you eat that come from the rainforest. Oranges, chocolate, nuts, cola, cinnamon, pineapples. All the fun food groups. Hey, Jaguar! Here, kitty kitty! <laughs> Uh, Wanda, something tells me he doesn't want you to scratch him behind the ears and rub his belly. Ah! Thou 
thousands of species of butterfly live in the rainforest. One of the rarest butterflies, the eight-spotted skipper, is right over... Welcome, intrepid Hey, Liz, you picked a fine time to play Tarzan. A uh, fine time to play Tarzan? Oh, brother. <laughs> the jaguar is the king of this jungle, and that's no lion. <laughs> Welcome to Correctamundo, the game show of rainforest trivia. I am your host, El Tigre. And today's contestants are the Spider the Monkey, Fair the Lance the Viper, and Iguana the Lizard. The first question for 100 points is, what animal is the top predator in the rainforest eating anything from frogs to fish to tapirs? Millipedes! Wrong. It is me, the jaguar. <laughs> now for 200 points, which predator is equally active day and night? My, my Aunt Sylvia? Wrong. It is me, the jaguar. <laughs> now for 300 points and our grand pies of our very own Cecropia tree, which animal has a spotted coat and is worshipped in many native cultures as a god? Um, why it would be you, the jaguar? Collectamundo! You are our new champion, but I am still hungry, so I'll eat you anyway. <laughs> Thanks for playing Correctamundo! Join me next week when my lunch, uh, I mean our contestants will be... A peccary, a three-toed sloth, and a caiman. Bye-bye. Wow! Look at that hawk! It must be the fiercest bird in the forest. I don't know about that, Carlos. The rainforest is full of fierce birds, like vultures, eagles, and hawks. Right, class, let's take it to the bridge. Or at least to the river. Just ask and I'll deliver. Here we are at the river. Now, let's take a look. To some... The bright blue morpho butterfly is a symbol of the rainforest. And if some others, their wings are just a piece of jewelry. Thousands of male morphos die this way every year. Machaca fish eat fruit that falls in the river. I bet there's one down there now, waiting for something to drop from this tree. Lucky for the machaca fish, that fruit is always in season in the rainforest. This glass frog just laid some eggs on that leaf over the stream. Now she's going to watch them for a day to make sure they're all right. I think it's apparent that frog is a semi-transparent parent. Carlos! This... Is that an otter? I thought they only lived up north. You mean an otter not be here? <laughs> Carlos! And why shouldn't they be here? There's good weather and fish to catch, and having a fur coat doesn't necessarily keep you out of the tropics. To 
defend itself from the snakes that want to eat it, the smoky frog oozes a nasty poison all over its skin. The last place any snake wants to be is on top of old Smokey. <coughs> this big thing is the smoky frog, and it's one of the largest amphibians in Costa Rica's rainforest. Wow! Check out this glass frog. You can see almost clear through to its inside. If this frog gets sick, she won't need any x-rays. If you hit the water in just the right way, it sounds like falling fruit, and the machaca will come up to look for it. Jaguars do this to trick the fish. They come up for lunch, and suddenly, they are lunch. Hey, that lizard's running across the river. Let's see what his slick trick is. Come on, get your feet wet. See you soon. Let the river roll, class. It's time for another look at the understory. Get back on the bus and check out another part of the rainforest. A falling tree creates a gap in the rainforest, and that means a whole new area to explore. Let's get a glance at the tree fall gap. Let's go over to the understory. Arriving at the ground floor of the rainforest. Watch your step, class. The understory is bursting with life. That jaguar's had enough of us for now. Let's get back on the bus. And all that cacophony can only mean that we're in the canopy, otherwise known as the top of the rainforest. Your hands may look silly, but they're mighty tough. According to my research, toucans will follow other birds to nesting sites and fruit trees. Then they chase away the same birds that guided them. Toucans are too much. According to my research, the moths spend almost their entire lives hanging upside down from branches, eating leaves, and sleeping. They move very, very slowly. Who needs to hurry when you've got it made in the shade? Sloths move so slowly that it if you want to follow the iguana, we'll learn more about the creatures of the canopy. If that orapendula is really hungry, he should try spinning in circles. But why? Because everyone knows that the woolly bird gets the worm. <laughs> Carlos! 
The rainforest really grows on you. Literally. We better get moving before vines and bromeliads start to take root on the bus. <laughs> Why did the bee sting the rhinoceros? Ow! Because he got a charge out of it. Carlos. Zippy, let's play the damselfly game. Oh, well, that's the end of spider season. See you later. Parrot snakes hang out in trees. How does a reptile catch an insect? I guess it snakes up on it. <laughs> Carlos! Wow! He almost carried off that sloth. That must be one powerful bird. That's a harpy eagle, Carlos. And monkeys and sloths are its main meal. Montezuma's or Pendia is an omnivore. That means it can eat plants and meat. But its favorite meal is fruit. Sure beats eating bugs and snakes. Besides, when's the last time you heard about fruit trying to get away? You didn't like your lunch yesterday? At least you didn't eat a poisonous bug. Help this Jackamar find a better lunch this time when we play bird food! Bye now! Is that a giant iguana? Those things are everywhere! Would you believe that I did some research this time? Iguanas live up here during the rainy season. But during the dry season, they dig burrows in the ground to lay eggs. Back it is to see all we can see in the canopy. But they're mighty tough. According to my research, toucans will follow other birds to nesting sites and fruit trees. Then they chase away the same birds that guided them. Toucans are too much. <coughs> Have a swinging good time when you play the escaping monkey game. Headed back to the ground where you're safe and sound? I'm right behind you. It's a bird! It's a plane! Well, okay, it's just a bird. The female 88 butterfly has spots in the shape of the number 88 on her wing. Finding one of these butterflies is supposed to be good luck. And look at that! You're on a field trip to the rainforest where you get to see exotic butterflies. How's that for good luck? <coughs> hey, look! There's a Montezuma's Oropendula. Oropendulas live in huge colonies of bag-like nests near pastures on the edge of the rainforest. The monkey pot tree is related to the Brazil nut tree. How do a couple of trees get such nutty names? Carlos. It looks like a big field of leaves up here. Like you could just walk across the tops of the trees all the way to the horizon. Something tells me that'd be an awful short walk. What kind of cologne would a bee use? Beeswax number five? BK1? I know. Eternity! Carlos! There are two ways for scientists to get into the canopy. 
You can start at the bottom, or you can take it from the top. As I always say, class, it doesn't matter where you start, it's where you finish. Why couldn't I just go to a normal school where lizards stay on the ground and teachers climb step stools? As I always say, Arnold, there's always more than one way to get wherever you want to go. This is a mantled howler monkey. Like all animals in the rainforest, she is really something to howl about. Here we are, class, amongst the menagerie of plants and animals in this tiny slice of the canopy. Watch your step, or you'll be walking on air. We're really up there. All these plants and animals have made their homes up here. I've heard of tree houses, but this is one high up habitat. If the snake's about to bite you, you should just say, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> no time for monkeying around. It's time for the escaping monkey game. Headed back to the ground where you're safe and sound? I'm right behind you. <laughs> no time for monkeying around. It's time for the escaping monkey game. Headed back to the ground where you're safe and sound? I'm right behind you. That's a mantled howler monkey. Sometimes they're hard to see because they hide out in the branches. Yeah, but even if you can't see them, you can sure smell where they've been. Whoa, look out below. <laughs> I've heard there's a story for every frog in the rainforest. Here's a frog, so let's hear her story. Tonight on Central America's Most Poisonous, the Poison Dart Frogs. Hello, I'm Bill Heron, and tonight we ask your help in locating some very poisonous frogs. Be on the lookout for these toxic amphibians, but if you see them, don't even think about eating them. There are dozens of these little creatures in the canopy, in the leaf litter, in the swamps. They sit out in the open all day wearing bright colors, daring you to eat them. But those bright colors are a warning. These frogs are poison. This security camera video taken by our undercover reporter, Felicia Heron, shows several tadpoles suction to their mother's back, getting a free ride up to a bromeliad hideout. There, the sneaky critters will grow up in safety, eating unfertilized eggs dropped by their mother. Later, they'll walk the forest safe from all predators except bats and man. Bats know how to eat these frogs and avoid the poisonous parts. And humans like the members of the Choco tribe scrape the frog's skin in order to coat their arrows with poison. If you see these frogs, remember, they are slimy and extremely toxic. But only with your help can we find Central America's most poisonous. Cool! This red-eyed tree frog lives in bromeliads up in the canopy, but it jumps down to the swamps below to mate. That is one fearless frog. Now that's jumping to the right conclusion. Oh. Uh -huh.
Jumping from the high branches to go into the water may be fun for a frog, but climbing back up these tall trees must get tiring. No matter how odd they seem, Tim, animals do things for a reason. In this case, the frogs head to the swamp because their eggs need lots and lots of water. Cool! This red-eyed tree frog... Anyone who told you not to play in the rain never played the rain game. Uh-oh, I think the sun's coming out. See you next time it rains, which won't be long around here. Do sloths have tails? This one does. Listen carefully, class. Any threes? Nope. Go fish. Don't rush me. Back to the rest of the canopy class and another look at where the trees meet the sky. Back on the bus. Now arriving at the ground floor of the rainforest. Watch your step, class. The understory is bursting with life. All right, class, let's take it to the bridge, or at least to the river. Just ask and I'll deliver. Here we are. Let the river roll, class. It's time for another look at the understory. Some tree fall gaps happen when people cut trees down for wood or so they can farm the land. You know what season it is when the trees take a tumble? What? Fall! A tree fall gap is like a little cut or a boo-boo on the rainforest. Now the rainforest is healing itself, just like the body does. Yeah, but unlike a boo-boo, this gap is actually good for the rainforest. People think the rainforests are dangerous, but some people have explored them for years and never even seen so much as a poisonous snake. And I plan to be one of them. I hope. Some of the Hamelia's deaths aren't so neat. Take this Kowati, please. With his big claws and long snout, he'll tear up dirt, rotten logs, or anything just for a snack. 
Looks like he'll get it, too. Those teeth and claws will make short work of almost anything's hiding space. These are uranium moths. Every few years, thousands of them gather in huge clusters and migrate for hundreds of miles. Pyras are tropical weasels who adapt to living just about anywhere. Pyras have been spotted in the trees, on the ground, and outside the forest in the grasslands. Oh, let's do the toucan tango. Who rules this rainforest? None other than that spotted panther, otherwise known as El Tigre. Senor Jaguar himself. Let's check him out. There's something squirrely about this mammal. Let's check out the garden where it lives. Here we are, in a sunny spot of the rainforest. What better place for a garden party? And the chance to meet lots of fascinating plants and animals. Back to our little hole in the forest, also known as the tree fall gap. There's something squirrely about this mammal. Let's check out the garden where it lives. Here we are in a sunny spot of the rainforest. What better place for a garden party? And the chance to meet lots of fascinating plants and animals. The blue gray tanager is one of the most common birds in the rainforest. But where did it get the name tanager? Tanager was what the Topi tribe of Brazil called this bird. They also gave us the word toucan. Miss Brizzle, how come we don't have poisonous spikes and camouflage and claws and all the defenses the other animals have? You already have a defense, Wanda. And it's called your brain. Of course, you have to use it before it does you any good. But I think you're well on your way. Toucans are big bird bullies. They'll steal fruit from other birds and even kick them out of their nest. About the only thing they have going for them is their look. That just goes to show you that beauty is only skin deep. As my Uncle Bartlett used to say, I couldn't have said it better myself. I just want to know how they fly with those huge bills. They must be really heavy. Well, those beaks are big, Wanda, but they're not solid. They're hollow, with lots of little braces inside to make them strong. Our Asaris are the smallest cousin in the toucan family. It sure looks like it. Bigger toucans are shoving it away from the food. Hey, you big birds, go pick on someone of your own size. <laughs> to it, class. It's time to chirp, whistle, and roar your way through a round of animal chorus. <laughs> Wait, what?
what's the squirrel doing in the rainforest? Doesn't he belong in another type of forest? Some species are intercontinental travelers. Besides the squirrels, this rainforest has raccoons, otters, porcupines, skunks, and possums. Is that squirrel doing what I think it's doing? You're right, it's burying a nut, just like the squirrels at home bury acorns. I guess the frizz was right. No matter where you go, some things never change. He's even stuffing his cheeks with food. He's no squirrel brain. Who knows when he'll find food again? Or maybe he's going to take that food back to his nest. Look closely at that tangle of vines up there, and you might just see where he keeps his stash. The blue gray tanager is one of the most common birds in the rainforest. But where did it get the name tanager? Tanager was what the Topi tribe of Brazil called this bird. There are lots of tanagers besides the blue-gray tanager. There's also the black and yellow, the blue and gold, the crimson collars, the gray-headed, the silver-throated, and the spangled-cheeked tanagers. What are they trying to do? Disguise themselves as rainbows? They certainly are a bright bunch. Tanagers are no lone. They look for food in large flocks of many different types of birds. Some of the birds act as sentries, warning other birds that they're in danger. That was pretty sneaky, but I guess that's how they get paid for being sentries. They scare everyone else away from the food they really want. What do you need to build a rainforest habitat? Let's find out. Headed back to your natural habitat? I'm all for that. See ya! Look at that yellow lantana flower opening up! That flower isn't yellow, Phoebe. It's orange! You were both right. As the lantana blooms, it changes from yellow to orange to red to stripes of all three. Gee, that sounds like one of her dresses. Wow, up close the passion flower has tiny spots that look like butterfly eggs. Hmm, a heliconia butterfly won't lay her eggs near other eggs. So, these spots must be there to fool her into thinking there are already eggs on the vine. Exactly, Wanda. <laughs> Instead of egging them on, the vine is egging them off. Look at these little tendrils. These are where the butterfly lays her eggs. But some of the tendrils are so weak that they fall off and take the eggs with them. Uh-oh, looks like she got taken too. Miss Frizzle, do the butterflies have any chance at all? Don't worry, Wanda. Not every Heliconius is fooled this easily, or there wouldn't be any more butterflies left to fool. <laughs>